Hey everyone, this is Chris, and this is a tip of the week. This week I want to talk about powering your chargers. A lot of people go out there and they're trying to figure out ways to power their chargers. And there's a lot of simple ways. Just go out and spend more money. Get an adapter. Get a AC to DC converter. Um, a lot of hobby shops really mark up their power supplies. Um, just for example, there's a company out there that they sell the same power supply that I got on eBay. For $20, they sell it for right around $200 just because it's in a fancy aluminum case with some thumb screws. Nothing else is done to it. So, just as an example of that, this is the 40 watt power supply. This one creates 12 volt. I actually have it set to uh, put out 14.1 uh, volts because it has a uh, voltage uh, variable adjustment on it. And I just have it wired into my uh, max 400 watt charger. A lot of others you can look at are, uh, most people get the little uh, brick power supplies. Uh, those work great for your smaller chargers. Something like this max 400, you need quite a bit more power. Um, this one, sorry, this is a 40 amp power supply, not a 40 watt power supply. So this is flying 40 amps at 12 volt. Um, so the math on there will give you the wattage and I'll throw it up here. Don't want to do the math right now. The, uh, as you get bigger on your chargers, you need to go up more. And you'll see a lot of people talking about converting server power supplies into RC power supplies. And they're very simple. Uh, this is the uh, G650 power supply. Um, this one is 1300 watts at 12 volt. So it has tons of power and works really well. Um, it is loud because it is a power supply. It's made to run 24 seven. So there are threads on uh, how to decrease the RPM of the fans on these or how to get them to calm down. Um, but if you have a garage and you just want to charge stuff all the time or someplace where it's not going to annoy people, getting one of these, doing the simple modifications to uh, make it connect to your charger and plug it in, good to go. Be careful and check grounds. Uh, if you don't know how to run a multimeter, learn how to run one. Make sure you check everything before running these. And don't touch any of the outputs when it is running. I don't care if you're just trying to plug in another one. Power the whole thing down, turn it back on when you have everything connected properly. Because if you have, like this one for example, if I had multiple connections on it and I wanted to plug in a charger and I get a battery going and I'm like, ooh, I don't want to power this thing down but I want to plug another charger into it. Don't do it. Power it down, be safe, make sure everything's grounded properly. And if you do have a surge protector with a ground fault uh, indicator, run it. Because if you have 1300 watts go into you, it is extremely dangerous. It can cause permanent damage or even death. So you do have to watch for them. And that is one of the benefits of buying one outright is you can't really mess it up. They have a lot of protection built into them. But you are paying quite a bit. This was $17. To get a 1300 watt power supply from a hobby store, you're probably looking at 300 plus. So, depends on if you want to spend the time to actually learn some basic electronics yourself. And it is easy once you get it all built and wired properly. Everything is completely safe on these. Mine uses a earth ground that actually runs to the power. So I have to have a three prong power or cord for it. Um, and it is DC isolated. So there is no DC voltage that goes onto this case. So completely isolated, works really well. The case itself is physically grounded and no real safety issues on it. So that is an option. But if you want to stay small, getting one of the smaller bricks, all you have to do is make sure that it puts out the amperage you need. So if you have a power supply or a charger that can charge, say, 120 watt, that means that you need 10 amp going into that minimum. I always go up a little bit. So for a 10 amp charger, uh, I would actually throw on like a 12 to 15 amp power supply 
That way, if for some reason your charger is at max for a long time, you're not going to burn up your power supply. So, that's one thing to watch for. It's really simple. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, comment below. And check back soon for another quick tip of the week.